It's so good to see you all this morning. You know, wife and I and the kids have been here a little over a month now, about six weeks, five, six weeks in there. And I remember when we first moved here early September, several folks told us, man, it's, it's beautiful now. I know you're loving, loving the hills. I got some friends from Lubbock here this morning. The hills are pretty nice, right? And uh, so you're going you're gonna to love the hills. But, Brandon, we're telling you, like, when the leaves change, man, it is, it is beautiful. And I, and I believed y'all. But it was a little bit also like, I mean, what's, they're just leaves, right? Like, is it going to be that amazing? You guys were right. <laughs> it is, it's been so beautiful. I love driving around. We had an all-campus, uh, all-campuses staff, uh, ministerial staff retreat this week and got to drive down to Lindale. Am I saying that right? Linden. I was close. Linden. Uh, forgive me. <laughs> and, Man, it was, it was beautiful driving down I-40, and then even just here in Nashville, it's, it's gorgeous. And so I went from going like, hey, what's the big deal about this, to like, oh, 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 I, I get it now. This is actually a thing. It really is gorgeous. We're in this series where we're talking about the five Gs. We're going to be disciples who make disciples. So we've talked about gospel conversations. We've talked about gathering. We're going to talk about giving. We're going to talk about going. But today we're talking about groups. Biblical community. So not just gathering in a really big group, but gathering in those smaller groups. They can, they can look a lot of different ways, but the idea of gathering with a smaller body of believers. Biblical community. And so many of us in this room, if, if you're not in biblical community, you probably are like I was about the leaves. Like, hey, what's, what's, what's the big deal about it? Like, what, what's so great about it? This morning I want you to see from, from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 3 why groups are a big deal and why they are part of our discipleship journey and us being equipped to make disciples. And others of you, maybe you are in a group, but kind of like living in Nashville a long, a long time, maybe you've grown numb to how beautiful it is when the leaves change. Maybe that's how you are with groups in a biblical community that you, you need to be reminded this morning of just how incredible the gift it is to be in biblical community, to be in a group. Lauren and I got to visit the Soul Sister group today, and it's a fun group. They had a good time. I feel like it just it fired me up for this message and seeing the joy that comes from biblical community. So if you would... With that in mind, I want you to stand with me, and we're going to read this one verse to begin with. In 1 Thessalonians 2, chapter 8, we're going to stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. <clears throat> Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2, 8, We cared so much for you that we were pleased to share with you, listen to this, not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives. Because you had become dear to us. God, would you do everything in us you need to do in order to do everything through us you want to do. Pray with me. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this amazing church. I pray that you would speak to us this morning. And we know that your word is alive and active. So we submit to your authority this morning, Jesus. It's your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I love just this idea of, of sharing life together. Our senior pastor, Jay Strother, uh, texted the campus pastor this morning. I love what he said. The gospel travels the road of relationships. If I, if I could just sum up all we're going to talk about this morning, that's what it is. The gospel travels the road of relationships. It's, it's sharing life together, not just the gospel. Yes, the gospel, that's the starting point, but we also share our lives together and we are to become dear to one another. We're going we're gonna to pick up in chapter 2, verse 17 and read for a little bit. And I love the text we're going to cover today because it's, it's kind of autobiographical in nature and we get, a, we get kind of a, a picture of what these relationships were like for the, for the Apostle Paul, but also the church in Thessalonica. So I'm going to pick up in verse 17 of chapter 2, if you want to read there with me. It says, But as for us, again, Paul writing, brothers and sisters, after we were forced to leave you, by the way, that leave you, more literally, it's, it's 
orphaned. This is a familiar, familial term. He, he's saying we were like family, but then we were forced to be separated. He says we were forced to leave you for a short time. Parenthetically, he writes, in person, not in heart. Don't you love that? Think about when, you, when you've gone, uh, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, you go visit some family, and when it comes time on that Saturday or Sunday and you have to leave, you, you, you're leaving physically, but you know your heart, you're still kind of there with your family, right? You cherish those moments. He said, we greatly desired and made every effort to return and see you face to face. Does face-to-face -face matter? You bet it does. I love being able to send a text message. I love being able to FaceTime the kiddos. And now the, the kiddos, that's all they know. So if I call Lauren, they're like, why can't I see dad? Right? That's all they know. But even FaceTime doesn't compare to actual real FaceTime, right? That's what Paul's saying. I, I want to be with you. So we wanted to come to you, verse 18. Even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. Do you know that Satan, the enemy, is actively seeking to keep you from being in close-knit, healthy, life-giving, biblical community? He wants to keep you from that. He, he stirs up things in your life to keep you from biblical community. He's actively working against it. Verse 19. For who is our hope or joy or crown of boasting in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. I love this, verse 19. It's Paul's greatest joy is not what, it's who. Think about that. Did Paul accomplish a few things in his lifetime? I, you are a little sleepy this morning. Did he, did he accomplish a few things? Absolutely he did. I mean, like we're reading the Bible, part of it written by him, right? He's done some cool things. And he says, oh, my, my glory, my joy, my crown is these, were these people that have seen God move in their lives. How many of us this morning, like a little preaching before the points, but how many of us need to refocus and get off the what and start focusing on the who? The who's in your life should matter more than the what's. Paul says, man, man, I desire to see you. You're my glory, my joy, my crown. Chapter 3. Therefore, when we could no longer stand it, we thought it was better to be left alone in Athens. And we sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you concerning your faith, so that no one will be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. In fact, when we were with you, we told you in advance that we were going to experience affliction. And as you know, it happened. For this reason, when I could no longer stand it, I also sent him to find out about your faith, fearing that the tempter had tempted you and that our labor might be for nothing. Here's the first thing I want you to see. You need biblical community because you need encouragement. You need encouragement. Look at what, what he says in, in verse 2 of chapter 3. He says, I, I, I was worried about you, so I sent Timothy. I could no longer stand it. I wanted to make sure you were, you were okay. So I didn't just send a letter. I sent Timothy, a person, to strengthen and encourage you concerning your faith. All of us need our faith to be bolstered, to be built up, to be encouraged sometimes. Why? Because like, by the way, a little newsflash, life is hard. Life is hard. Not just sometimes, probably most of the time, life is pretty hard. You're either coming out of a hardship, in a hardship, or headed into a hardship. I have the gift of encouragement. <laughs> life is hard. He talks about, man, we, we knew we were going to experience affliction. We told you it would happen. And you guys are going to, he's talking to the Thessalonians, you guys who experience affliction too. So I sent Timothy to encourage you, to bolster your faith. Hey, by the way, I want to say, I know it's uh, like family Sunday. I can see some of the stress on the parents' faces. Y'all, it's all good. Don't stress, okay? Your, your kiddos are doing great. Our kiddos are hanging in there too. So everybody should take a deep breath. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. I promise you, they're not distracting me. I'm used to it. 
We need encouragement. Parents need encouragement. <laughs> we need encouragement. I love, I love the idea of encourage because it's this idea of, and it says strength of bolstering, coming around. What does Ecclesiastes 4.12 say? A cord of three strands is not easily broken. So again, Paul says, I, I didn't want you to be shaken in your faith. So I said, Timothy, relationship, biblical community to bolster you, strengthen you so you wouldn't be shaken. That's why you need to be in a group of some kind. Last weekend, we took a family um, hiking uh, <laughs> through, through Percy Warner in Percy Warner Park. And I think it was maybe Lauren that pointed it out, but... There is a massive tree. Of course, every tree looks big to me right now. But there was a massive tree that I had, you could see was leaning pretty, pretty hard. And hard enough that we had to stop and figure out what was going on. Was this tree, had it completely fallen over? And what happened? Apparently, I guess the wind got it. I'm assuming that's what it was. But it had fallen, was on its way over. And it was near two or three other trees, massive trees as well. And those trees caught it. And so if you, I followed the tree line back down to the base, and the roots were still in the ground. It had taken a hit, almost went over, but because there were other trees there to catch it, that tree is saved. And sure enough, like, it's, it's not dead. Its roots are in the ground. It still had some uh, leaves on it. Of course, they're falling now. It's fall, but <laughs> it, it was still alive. Had those other trees not been there, I'm confident we would have had to climb over that dead tree. Instead, it was still standing, and it was alive. See, that's what being in biblical community does for you. If you are on your own, isolated, the winds, the trials of this life will come. And if you're not in biblical community, they will blow you over. It's going to be hard to get back up. How many of you, just by a show of hands, can right now think of a time where your biblical community, whatever that shape looks like, your biblical community kept you from falling over harder than you would have on your own. Would you just raise your hand? Man, look at that. Hands all over the auditorium. Bolstered, strengthened in your faith by other believers. You, me, we need encouragement. You don't just need encouragement, you need joy. Keep reading the text. Verse 6. But now Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news about your faith and love. He reported that you always have good memories of us and that you long to see us as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and affliction, we were encouraged about you through your faith. For now we live if you stand firm in the Lord. I love this, verse 9. How can we thank God for you in return for all the joy we experience before our God because of you? Second thing we see, you need biblical community because you need joy. You need joy in your life. How many of you, the distance between you experiencing joy in your life and the, and the sorrow you're experiencing now, how many of you, the distance that would close that gap is just being in a small group, being in biblical community to bring joy. I love what he says. He, he says um, that Timothy gave the report that they always have good memories. But man, Timothy told us that man, when, you think of, when you think of us, you have great memories. Great memories of when you reached out in prayer or reached out with a prayer request and your group, your community prayed for you and you saw God move. Good memories of when you lost a loved one and the last thing you wanted to do was go to the grocery store and your small group showed up on your doorstep with a meal. Good memories of going and serving on that mission trip together and laughing because you uh, almost didn't make your flight and had to run through the terminal. But man, you've got a story to tell about it. 
good memories of being at Fall Fest 2023, making s'mores together. Little plug there. <laughs> good memories. He says in verse 9, how can I thank God and for, give him return for all the joy we experience because of you? So yes, God gives us joy, but we also get joy through God's people. Are you missing out on joy because you're not in community? You're not in biblical community. Do you see how this is an invitation to something better? I think we often think of groups as like, ugh, got to go to a small group this morning. <laughs> got to go to a small group tonight. Gotta, I got to meet with my triad, my, my, my little group, my Bible study. Oh, got to do that. No, this is an invitation to something better. There's actually joy to be had in it. Like when I think about joy, maybe I'm just thinking about it because of tonight. But uh, so tonight, this really sounds like a shameless plug. I'm trying not to do this. But we have eight bouncy houses tonight. That's going to be pretty epic. And I love, even to say that all the kids, I have their attention now. I love watching kids with a bouncy house because once they see it, they can't not go to it. You know what I mean? Like. Guaranteed, when they pull in the park, when you pull in the parking lot tonight and they see the bouncy houses, be prepared to go to the bouncy house. Now, most kids know when they get in that bouncy house, because of all the kids bouncing in there, they're gonna, they might bump their heads a little bit, but it's worth it because they're going to have a blast. Why am I telling you that? What if you flipped your perspective of groups instead of like, oh, oh I have to... And said, no, I get to be in community with others. And yes, we may bump our heads every now and then. You probably will. <laughs> but there's more joy in being together because the gospel travels the road of relationships. So rather than standing back and like, I don't want to no, see the door to being in a small group biblical community and jump into that door. There's joy in it. So there's you, you need encouragement, you need joy, and this third one we're going to see is a little bit humbling. Look back in the text, verse 10. He says, we pray very earnestly night and day to see you face to face, there it is again, importance of being with people, not just talking to them through a screen, to see you face to face and to complete what is lacking in your faith. Here's the third thing we see. You need biblical community because you and me, we need growth. We need growth. He said, I, I wanted to be there with you. I'm praying for you. We can see each other face to face to complete what is lacking in your faith. It makes me think of Philippians 3 where Paul says, says he wants to know the fullness of Christ. He says, I haven't obtained it. I'm not there. I haven't reached it. So he says, I'm pressing on to make it my own. He says, I'm not as mature as I should be, so I'm going to keep striving. All of us have room to grow in our walk with Christ, to be more like Jesus, to be a better disciple, to be better at making and multiplying disciples. And part of that growth, part of that stretching forward, Paul is showing us here in the text, is to be part of biblical community. Because it completes what is lacking in your faith. What is Proverbs Chapter 27, 17 say, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. The way we grow, the way we get more serious about our walk with Jesus is through being in biblical community. Being together, sharpening one another. So when you say, man, I just, you know, I'll go to the big church and I'll sit there and listen to Brandon. But, and I'll sing, but I don't really want to be part of a group. I think I'm good. What you're saying is. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm comfortable with the lid I've hit. If you're not in any kind of biblical community, you're saying, I, I, ah, whether you know it or not, what you're saying is, I, I think I'm good. Like I've reached a point in my Christian maturity, I think I can just be content with. The Apostle Paul from Philippians 3, the Apostle Paul was saying, I'm not there yet. I've got room to grow. By the way, Christian maturity, you can't decide how mature you are based on your age, right? It has nothing to do with that. So there's not, there's not an age where you reach, well, now nah, I'm good, I don't need to be a biblical community. All of us need 
each other because the gospel travels the road of relationships. We need encouragement. We need joy. We need growth. That's why groups, that's why biblical community is so important and so amazing. It's an invitation to something better, being more like Christ, being a true disciple, but also discipling other believers and people to help them know and grow in Jesus. What I love about this text is while it's autobiographical in nature and there's not really commands here, it's still as if Paul is holding up a mirror before us. And asking us to look in and just consider where we are at in our own biblical community. Y'all tracking with that? So it's, they're not commands, but by hearing his story, the story of the Thessalonians, he's showing us, he's saying, here's the mirror. What does your reflection look like? Does your reflection match that of the early church? Or do you not have biblical community? So I want to give you three questions to help you self-reflect on what we've seen in the text. And then we'll wrap it up. First question. Where are you finding biblical community? Where are you experiencing biblical community? If you can't answer that question, today's a great day to be able to answer that question. After the service, there'll be our connection team back in the back. They'd love to meet you, help you get connected. There's this card in the pew back in front of you. Down here in the bottom right, you can say, I want to get involved in a group. You just write your name, your number, your email. Check that box. Drop it one of the boxes on your way out. I'll be here after the service. Hand it to me. It would thrill my heart to be able to help you find biblical community. Whether that's a group on Sunday mornings, midweek, whether that's a Bible study, whether that's a triad. It could look a lot of different ways, but all of us need to be in it. So, so where are you finding it? Here's a second question I want to ask you. <clears throat> How well are you leaning into biblical community? How, 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 how much vigor are you leaning into biblical community? The reason I ask that question is I think a lot of us, you may, you may be in a group and you're like, man, you talked about encouragement and joy and growth. I don't really feel like I'm getting that from my group. Well, my question is, are, are you leaning into it? It's kind of like if you went to the gym and you got some one-pound weights and did a lot of curls and left and said, I don't really feel anything. I would say, you didn't try. There's no effort, right? Like, man, my five-year-olds can dominate some one-pound weights, right? Can't you sis? <laughs> Some effort, leaning into it, being consistent, being vulnerable, being being accountable, participating. Like if I'm part of a group and I never share anything, I'm probably not going to feel that encouragement and joy and growth in my life. Are you leaning in? You don't get to what Paul was talking about, of, oh, man, we long to see you. We have great memories. You don't get that by just showing up and sitting and doing nothing. (laughs) Right? You you lean in. I've had to remind myself, just being in a new season, you all have been amazing, but just being in a new place, I had to remind myself, you don't find community, you build community. Are you leaning into it? Are you intentionally building or are you just kind of hanging out? Third question I'll ask you. Are you praying for your biblical community? Are you praying for your community? Not just showing up when it's the time for it and hope to have a few laughs, but actually like during the week, praying for each other, checking in on each other. I'm going to close just by reading this this last little paragraph in chapter 3, Paul's prayer for the church. He says, Again, think about the context is relationships. The context is biblical community. And he says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. God, man, I'd love to see them again. Hey, you know what's a biblical prayer for you throughout the week? Just just pray, man, I'd love to run into Mr. Bobby this week. Man, that'd be awesome. Lord, could you help our paths cross? That's a biblical prayer. He says, And may the Lord cause you to increase and overflow with love for one another and for everyone just as we do for you. 
May he make your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Amen. Are you praying for your biblical community? So here's how I want to finish. I'm going to ask our worship team to come on up. I'm just going to ask you right now where you're at to take a moment to pray for brothers and sisters in Christ. Just pray for them. And if you're like, I don't know what to pray for, man, just you keep your finger open to 1 Thessalonians 3, verses 11 through 13. Just pray that prayer for them. Straight out of the Bible. That's awesome. Pray for brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you're in a group, man, pray for those people specifically. You can pray for your family. What might God do in your life and in our church's life if we lean just a little harder into traveling this road together? Pray together, and then we're going to sing together.